Marriage is a good thing. The Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. This simply means marriage is such a beautiful thing. So I pray for you today that whatever is making your marriage not to settle is brought to its knees now. The Bible says anything that does not have the name of the Lord must kneel to the name of the Lord. And marriage has the name of the Lord which means anything that is staging war against it will be cancelled. Your marriage settlement is here now. Marriage, like I said, is a good thing and the Lord wants to see that you are happy. There may have been a long-standing issue, maybe a generational curse, or something that is following your family, but God is about to break that cause and settle you maritally. He will do it and it will be just like a dream. From the book of Psalms chapter 126 verses 1 to 6, which says, When the Lord brought back the captives who returned to Zion, we were like those who dream. It seemed so unreal. Then our mouths filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Turn to freedom, our captivity, and restore our fortunes. O Lord, as the streams in the south, the Negeb, are restored by the torrents. They who sow in tears shall reap in joy in singing. He who goes forth bearing seed and weeping at needing his precious supply of grain for sowing shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Lack of moving forward when it comes to marriage is a setback. It is captivity and the Lord is delivering you from such and it will be just like a dream to you. God can do it because first of all, He has promised that He will never fail, and His word is His bond. He said in His word that His word will not go and return to Him void without accomplishing that which it was sent to do. Another definite reason why God will help you and settle you maritally is that He is a good shepherd and He takes care of us very well. The Bible in Psalms chapter 23 verses 1 to 6 says, the Lord is my shepherd, to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with Him, not for my earning it, but for His namesake. Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me, your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my brimming cup runs over. Surely or only goodness, mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life and through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. God will guide you and lead you to the part where you will receive your settlement marital wise. God has never failed and he is not about to start with you. Your marital settlement is here and it has come to stay. God is making a way for you even in the desert and making every crooked path straight for you. God will make a way such that you will meet the person who will bring the deliverance God is about to bring your way. You do not have to worry or be afraid. God has done it before and he will yet do it again. So relax and let your heart be at rest. God will fix it for you. Marriage is incredibly fun. It's also incredibly hard. For most people, it is the greatest act of ministry and service to another person that they will ever undertake. Husbands are called to give themselves up for their wives, while wives are called to submit to, respect, and serve their husbands as to the Lord. Though husbands and wives receive countless blessings from biblical marriage, the very idea of biblical marriage describes and act many acts of love. And what are the attributes of love? Let us look at it from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 8, which says, If I can speak in the tongues of men, and even of angels, but have not to love, that reasoning, intentional, 
and spiritual devotion such as is inspired by God's love for and in us. I'm only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not to love God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned, or so that I may bring glory but have not to love God's love in me, I gain nothing. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, and does not display itself hoidily. It is not conceited, arrogant and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us does not insist on its rights or its way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the devil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes and is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away, it will lose its value and be superseded by truth. According to scripture, marriage is anything but a selfish endeavor. It is a ministry. Marriage is God's plan for you. Don't let anyone deceive you in thinking it is not. Although I must warn that not everyone is meant to get married. As hard as it is to say, I must say so that we will not be misled. Not everyone is meant to get married. Some are destined to remain as singles and serve the Lord with it. But some people are not meant to be single. I do not care whether the reason why you are single is because of one wrong you did in the past that is speaking against you today. Whatever is the situation, it can respond to the name of the Lord. Your marital settlement is now in Jesus' name. So, in another sense, you may be married but you have been encountering some problems and challenges in your home. The Bible says, Call unto me, and I will answer, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God will show you great and mighty things that will fix your marriage. The Lord will give you an answer of peace today, an answer that will supersede your imagination. It does not matter what you have been passing through, when God turns away the captivity of Sion, we were like men, who then were our mouths filled with laughter. Then he said among the hidden, The Lord has done great things for them. Although I must say, in whatever circumstances we are not ignorant of the devil's devices, and we know we do not wrestle against flesh nor blood, according to the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13, which says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him, that strength which His boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of the heavy-armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly, supernatural sphere. Therefore put on God's complete armor, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on an evil day of danger, and having done all the crisis demands, to stand firmly in your place. Stand firm and see the deliverance God is bringing your way. The settlement you have been praying for, for a long time, has come to you. 
and no one can steal that away from you. And lastly, you must trust what God is doing as the perfect thing for you. The Bible says to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. God has come to help you.